Another property of ammonia is that it's very, very soluble in water. We have a flask over here that is filled up with ammonia, and I'm going to stick a, another tube in this. So this bung here has a tube running right the way through it. So it's open to the air, okay? But I'm going to lower this into the water here, add a little bit of extra water into the, into the flask, okay? And the ammonia instantly dissolves in that tiny little bit of water that I squirted in. Now, as it dissolves, this reduces the pressure inside the flask, okay? Which means that more of the water is forced up the tube into the top, which, of course, that then dissolves the ammonia and so reduces the pressure, and so more water is forced up. And so the water is gradually squirting up into the flask here. So you can see the water gradually filling up, and this is just because the ammonia is so soluble in water. We've also added some coloration to the water here. You may have noticed, well, this is actually from a red cabbage. The red colour is just due to some red cabbage that we boiled up in some water, and again, you see that the colour is changing here because the ammonia is very alkaline and the cabbage colour here is acting as an indicator and changing uh, in colour with the ammonia. OK, I think I need to clamp this then, please, Mark. Otherwise, I'll be stuck here all day. All right, so if we just put this in the... Thank you. So we'll just leave that there, and that will gradually fill up as the ammonia dissolves in the water. Now, how did we get onto ammonia, though? We got onto ammonia because we were looking at copper, the copper metal, okay? And we saw that the ammonia was a test for the metal copper. But what about other metals? So we've seen copper that we, it can occur naturally, as the beautiful copper that we see here, but more usually it has a chance to corrode and form the carbonate. Well, we started by looking at iron, the reaction of iron with sulfuric acid. 